Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Some, some, some of you loving it, and you can't get enough of it. Then put the hand up high, right where the other is. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know you're loving it. So if you're loving it, you can't get enough of it. Then put the hand up high, right where the other is. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know you're loving it. And if you're loving it, you can't get enough of it. Then put the hand up. Hey, this is Reese with the Medical School, and today we're going to talk about ventricular hypertrophy. The outline for today's talk is as listed. We're going to talk about what is hypertrophy, how do you diagnose ventricular hypertrophy, what is the reasoning behind the criteria for ventricular hypertrophy, and go over some practice questions. Now, let's take a look and see what is ventricular hypertrophy. So hypertrophy is any increase in the wall thickness of the heart ventricles. It can be due to increased pressure or volume from such diseases like pulmonary hypertension, aortic stenosis, mitral regurg, um, and it can even be caused by infiltrative diseases like amyloidosis. The increase in ventricular wall size will change the QRS axis and appearance. Normally there's a prominent R component to the QRX, QRS axis because the left ventricle is so much larger than the right ventricle. So the magnitude of depolarization of the left ventricle is more prominent and that's what's recorded by our electrodes. Now let's take a look at how do you diagnose left ventricular hypertrophy? So the diagnosis of left ventricular hypertrophy are one, having the depth of the S wave in lead, lead three plus the height of the R wave in lead one being equal to or greater than 25 little boxes. In addition, a second criteria is the depth of the S wave in lead V1 and the height of the R wave in lead V5 is equal to or greater than 35 little box. As a little refresher, let's take a look at what are QRS deflections. Your Q deflection is always your first negative deflection. Your R deflection is always the first positive deflection. And the S deflection is always the first negative after the R wave. So this is the QRS deflections that make up the QRS complex, and they're really important to know in diagnosing ventricular hypertrophy. Let's take a look now at the reasoning behind the criteria of ventricular hypertrophy. So I'm going to draw a few axes here. We're going to have our lead 1 axis being the horizontal axis, and the lead 3 axis coming diagonal right there. I'm going to draw a crude shape of the heart um, just to give us kind of a, a layout. In left ventricular hypertrophy, it is the left ventricle that, that becomes larger and larger due to some secondary process. And we have a normal axis here drawn in blue. As the left ventricle becomes larger, this magnitude of depolarization increases, demonstrated by the purple vector, and keeps on increasing and increasing, demonstrated by the red vector. These increases in magnitude are recorded by the electrodes that we use to obtain our EKG. So in the case of if we are at lead one and we're looking at these axes or these vectors, of increasing size due to left ventricular hypertrophy, we see that the magnitude of the positive deflection, since this depolarization is on the positive side of lead one, keeps getting larger. So the positive deflection is getting larger, meaning that the R wave in lead one will keep on increasing in size. So that's the reason why we look at the R wave in lead 1 to diagnose ventricular hypertrophy because as the ventricle gets larger, its deflection or positive deflection or R wave in lead 1 will get larger.
In addition, if we are looking from lead 3, we will see that the magnitude of these axes are also getting larger. But there's a difference here. The component that lead 3 sees is the negative component of the axis. And because it sees a negative component, lead 3 keeps on seeing a more negative deflection occurring. The, it's because the axis is becoming more negative and negative. Or I should say the deflection is becoming more negative and negative. So that's why the S wave, or the negative deflection, becomes larger and larger with left ventricular hypertrophy. That's why we look to lead 3 and the S wave in lead 3 to identify left ventricular hypertrophy. So the combination of a large R wave in lead 1, a large S wave in lead 3 can help diagnose left ventricular hypertrophy. Now let's, let's look at how the V1 and V5 electrodes play a role in diagnosing left ventricular hypertrophy. Right now I'm going to draw the basic diagram of the heart. Um, it's going to be a circle. We're looking from the top now, so from the head down to your toes. And V1 is going to be on the front of the chest and V5 is going to be wrapped around towards the side. Now remember the heart's kind of a tilt, so the axis will be at a tilt. Normally our axis is drawn there in bluish purple going towards V5. As you get left ventricular hypertrophy, the magnitude of the axis will increase, so represented by the green, and then it will get even higher in magnitude represent, represented in orange. These vectors are shooting towards V5, so you'll see a positive deflection in V5 that keeps on getting larger and larger. At the same time, these axes are going away from V1. Because they're going away, you'll see a negative deflection in V1 that keeps getting more and more negative. So we, in V1, we look at the S wave. And in V5, we look at the R wave. Now let's look at right ventricular hypertrophy. The hallmark of right ventricular hypertrophy is a QRS direction that points either right, anterior, or both. The QRS axis will now be right axis deviated because of the increasing mass in the, of the right ventricle. The R S ratio, that means the R spike divided by the S spike or deflection is greater than 1 with a negative T wave in V1. R wave in, v, in deflection V1 plus the S in V5 or V6 is equal to or greater than 10 millimeters. And the R S ratio in V5 or V6 is usually less than 1. These are basic criteria for diagnosing right ventricular hypertrophy. Let's look at the reasoning behind the criteria for diagnosing right ventricular hypertrophy. So to see why the QRS axis deviates in right ventricular hypertrophy, let's draw a basic diagram of the heart with our basic axes present. Remember, the QRX axis is normally left deviated because there's more left ventricular mass there, represented by red. That's a normal axis pointing towards the left ventricle. As the right ventricle keeps on getting larger and larger, the axis will start shifting more towards right axis deviation represented by the blue, and then finally it will shift completely right axis devi deviation represented by the purple. This is a characteristic of right ventricular hypertrophy. That's pretty easy to kind of visualize, but let's go to the V1, V5 leads to see how to diagnose right ventricular hypertrophy through these leads. So let's draw a basic diagram of the heart. We're looking from top down, and let's draw V1 and V5. Normal QRS axis points towards the left ventricle, as represented in red. As the right ventricle increases in mass and gets larger and larger, secondary to some disease process, we can see that the QRS axis will change, represented in purple, more towards the right ventricle. As the right ventricle gets larger, the magnitude of this axis also gets larger. So you see 
purple, getting bigger to yellow, getting bigger to blue. Now, when the right ventricle gets larger, an axis points towards the right ventricle, V1 is now picking up positive deflections because axis has shifted. So the positive deflection V1 will start getting larger, and you will see that the R wave in V1 begins to get larger. At the same time, now the axis is going towards the right ventricle, so V5 is seeing negative deflections, and thus it will the S wave will get more negative and negative. Now let's take what we learned and try to apply this to a problem. I would pause here to figure out your own, otherwise we'll go ahead and solve it ourselves. We're going to apply the same acronym I've been using in previous videos of Rahibi to this problem. That's R, which represents rate, R, rhythm, A, axis, H, hypertrophy, I, infarction, B, block, I intervals. So we're going to focus on just the rate, rhythm, axis, and hypertrophy. Looking at the rate, it looks a little bit more than three boxes. We can call this about 95 beats per minute. We'll look at the rhythm. If you take a look at the long rhythm strip towards the bottom part of the EKG, there appears to be equal intervals between each QRS complex. That's what I would call it's a regular rhythm. Next, we're going to look at Axis. So again, we're identify leads 1, AVF, and then lead 2. So lead 1, positive, and then in lead 2, it is, sorry, in lead AVF, it's also positive. Thus, we have normal axis. We don't even need to consider lead 2 at this time. Now we have normal axis. So right away you can tell you it's unlikely that there's the right ventricular hypertrophy present just by the way the axis is already oriented. From here we'll go and look at if any hypertrophy is present. From this EKG there doesn't seem to be any atrial enlargement but if you look at leads V1 and V5 the QRS complexes are pretty large in height and especially the S wave in V1 and the R wave in V5 and V6. Right away when you see that you should right away know that this is likely left ventricular hypertrophy. We can count the boxes and we see that it meets our criteria. So right here we have left ventricular hypertrophy demonstrated in this EKG. Again, regular rate, regular rhythm, normal axis, we have left ventricular hypertrophy. Let's try one more problem. So practice problem number two, I'd stop here and pause when figuring on your own, or otherwise we'll figure it out together. We'll use the same acronym before, Rahibi, rate, rhythm, axis, hypertrophy, infarction, block, and intervals. We're going to focus just on the rate, rhythm, axis, and hypertrophy. So looking at the rates, it's a pretty fast rate here. Uh, maybe a box and a half at the most. i call this about 175 as the rate. Next we're going to look for rhythm. Looking at the strip, you see that the rhythm is pretty regular. So I'd call this a regular rhythm. Next, we're going to look at the axis. So you look at lead 1, lead AVF, and then if we need to, lead 2. Lead 1 is positive. Lead AVF is just barely positive. So I would call it normal axis. Now let's look at hypertrophy. Be careful with this EKG. Looking at lead 2, you see right away that their P wave is, is slightly enlarged there greater than two boxes. I would call this right atrial enlargement or dilation. So the pa patient has some right atrial enlargement or dilation. And then two, I would look at V1 and V5. V1 has the characteristic of an R greater than an S wave with a T wave inversion and V5 has R greater than S greater than one ratio. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at iMedicalSchool for daily questions. This is Reese.